Hear, O oh Lord, and answer me. Save the servant who trusts in you, my God. Have mercy on me, O oh Lord, for I cry to you all the day long. Good morning, and welcome to St. Paul's Church, and thank you for joining us this beautiful Sunday morning. We especially welcome those who are joining us for the first time. We gather now as God's holy people to celebrate the 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time. We now invite you to please stand as we begin our liturgy. And as we begin, let us sing together number 311, Table of Plenty. the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. Again, we ask the Lord to truly help each and every one of us to partake of this wonderful sacrament of the Eucharist and the family that we gathered here. We have our own intentions, we have our own things that we bring to the altar, and we know that the Lord Jesus listens to us and he heals us and he gives us what we know, what we, what we want. Not so much right away, because we have to pray for it. We have to be convinced that he is our Lord and our Savior, and that he takes care of each and every one of us. One of the great gifts he gives us is the forgiveness of our faults and failures. He helps us to say we can get through these things that keep us away from God and neighbor. But we know that we rely upon him and we kind of call to mind those things that do keep us away from God and neighbor, and we express our sorrow. Christ Jesus, you are the one sacrifice offered for all people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You will never forsake the works of your hands. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting.
faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We ask our young children to come forth for the word of God. And they're coming up with a catechist who teaches them all the good things of our gospel. We ask Almighty God to bless you, to help to listen to the words of the gospel, to learn more about Jesus who loves you very much, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great day. Go now and listen to God's word. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day I will summon my servant, Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Elikim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
forsake the work of your hands. Don't forsake the work of your hands. Lord, your love is eternal. Don't forsake the work of your hands. Don't forsake the work of your hands. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? Or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, and he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. I think today we have a very interesting gospel because it tells us about the profession of our faith. We have the profession of our faith on Sundays and feast days in which we boldly say, we believe in one God or I believe in one God. And then we go through the whole uh, stanzas of what our profession of faith means to us and how we express it to one another. And these profession of faith comes from gospel accounts of what happened in the life of Jesus and his first apostles. And this is a very important type of gospel in the sense that it mirrors the first reading. The first reading in the time of the Old Testament, kingdoms were built up and they had palaces, they had fortresses, And there was one special room in which all the treasures of the kingdom were locked up. And the person who had that key for the lockup of those treasures was a trusted person. And we see in the first reading that all of a sudden they found this person was not trustworthy, that he maybe took some of the treasures for himself, took some of the jewels or the diamonds or the crown or gold, He was worried about himself and not the kingdom. And when the king found out that he was going into the treasury with his key, he banished him. He took him out of that job right away. Jesus Christ was going to give the keys of the kingdom of heaven to Peter. And he had to ask Peter, Do you love me? Do you care about me? Do you care about what I'm doing in my apostolic work? And Peter very impetuously always said, yes, you can count on me. I'll be there for you. I got your back. I will never let you down. I would die for you. We know Peter is like each and every one of us, a human being, And we have our people that we admire and we say, I'm with you all the time. And then sometimes when tough, toughness comes our way, we kind of back off or we say, I don't know the person. That was Peter's problem. He was man, he was human like us, but he found the savior. The savior took him out two weeks ago from the water that he was sinking in and he saved him, but he, he, asked Jesus, can I walk on water? Sure you can, come on, see me. And then he faltered. And then he said, I would never deny you. And we know three times before the crucifixion, he denied him. The keys that Christ Jesus gave to Peter are the keys to the kingdom of heaven. 
everlasting life. He has the power to unlock the gate or to lock the gate. He is the one that is the person of the church. And we know that as Catholics, we have that great lineage of the first Pope Peter, and we have Pope Francis. And that they have so many unbreakable ways of moving the church forward. The church is not the same as the early church when Christ went to heaven and the first Christians were assaulted. They were hunted down. They were persecuted. They were killed for their faith. But they stood up and say, I'm not worried about the kingdom here on earth because that is going to go. What I want to be in the kingdom of everlasting life, eternal life. So I think the, the message that we have this morning is very important for us because we know that we love our Lord Jesus. We know that he has given us the church. He has given us a succession of mere mortal men who occupy the throne of Peter and that succession. And we say, that person is leading us to Jesus. We say, the Eucharist unites us with Jesus in our reception of him. And our prayers that we go home with and special devotions that we have connect us to the spirituality of Jesus. But we have to be on guard because sometimes we're tired. We want to give up. There's other things that tickle our ear about what's it all about. Is this the true thing? What's this treasure? What's the key to the kingdom? What does it mean to be a disciple of Jesus? Is it, am I all in it? Or I'm just there for, you know, the pleasantries and the gathering and, you know, sometimes, you know, the fellowship and the, the uniting of uh, a group of people. But do I stand out? Each and every one of us have to stand out because we have that spirituality in our hearts, minds, body, and soul. Not only when we receive the Eucharist, but also on our baptism, in our confirmation, and our daily living of the struggles of life. Because it is a contradiction of the reality of what we're shooting for. Heavenly bliss, being with the Savior for all eternity, knowing that our souls live on forever, knowing that this is not just uh, something, the dead end here, but it's the opening of what our religious profession tells us that we believe in and that we hold firm to and that with the grace of God that we always go back to. Because sometimes we do waver. We have our faults and failures. We have our distance that we say, I'm not right now. I'm a little busy now. I got this big deal going on that is going to really satisfy me. But it's all passing. It's in a, it just goes very quickly. And we say, what is the most important thing? It is my soul. It is the part of God that's in me that returns to God. And he says, you have done wonderful things with the attributes of blessings and spirituality, the Holy Mass, the Eucharist, the bonds of family, how you try to strive to do good and avoid things that are not good. That's what counts. But sometimes it's a long, hard journey. And we do make mistakes. We do have our faults and failures. But that's when we come into the idea, I have my sacraments. One of the greatest sacraments is our reconciliation, the sacrament of penance, the sacrament of confession that we made a mistake. I can do better. I need your help. And that's no different from the first apostles. Because Peter, you would think he's the most unlikely person because he was brash, he was forward, he was a, kind of like a leader that says, let's go, we're right behind him. 
and, we t and he probably told Jesus, whispering, don't look behind because I'm not there when the, go when the going gets tough. And he knew his faults and failures, but he professed again, in my weakness, Jesus, I am sorry. Build up my strength. I believe that you are the Christ, that we have been waiting for you for centuries in our religious uh, background, and that you are the one for eternal life. So let us maybe, when we think about that today, and we have our profession of faith, we say it boldly. We say, I am convinced, I'm here because of that, and please help me during the course of this week that I can live out my religiosity, I can live out my spirituality, I can believe that Jesus Christ is number one in my life, and I can use him as example of how I live with my brothers and sisters during today, because we're in it together, we profess everything together, we are very much focused, and we hope that focus carries on during the next time we meet in the sacrifice of the Mass, in which Jesus says, I give up my life so that we could have life eternal. stand for the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. To him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, and who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and life of the world to come. Amen. Turn your ear, O Lord, and answer us. Save the servant who trusts in you, our God. Hear the prayers we bring before you. For the Pope, that he is attentive to his need for God and remains active in prayer, we pray to the Lord. That elected officials govern with fairness and respect, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our that pastoral leaders in the church never fail to be agents of God's mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For the sick, especially Maria Polino, that they will feel the healing presence of Christ in their lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for those who have recently died, Marjorie Mayer and Joan Cavallaro, that the joy of heaven will be theirs for eternity, and also for the needs of the people of the parish, we pray to the Lord. Amen. And now we take a few moments now to express to the Lord our own private needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Eternal God, you have never withheld your mercy and your pardon to the contrite of heart. Place in us a burning desire to bring the same compassion into the entire world. 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As our gifts are prepared, let us sing together number 398, Drawn to You. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. The Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. Praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we have lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly to his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until you. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, 
forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom and power. And Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And we turn to each other with the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy of the mission of my root, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. approach the table of the Lord, let us sing together number 646, We Belong to You.
my joys beneath my sorrow lives a peace greater than my need before the dawn beyond tomorrow love has been and evermore shall be oh the deep restored to me above this world beyond my rising love has been and evermore shall Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We invite you to take home a copy of the bulletin or see our website for information on the new Mommy and Me ministry and the new children's choir starting in the fall. And we'd also like to extend another invitation uh, at the next Mass, 12 o'clock today. Bishop Michael Saparito will be coming to celebrate Mass here. And although you've been to Mass already today, we invite you to come back if you'd like and help welcome the bishop. And we have uh, a reception after the 12 o'clock Mass that you're invited to join. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you and your families, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. We go forth in peace. Amen. Thanks be to God. And as we go forth, let us sing together number 424, One Spirit, One Church. 